Hello, my name is Karen Meixner. I'm from the Fachhochschule UNEM in Graz. I'm here today, um, not as I expected I'd be. It's a little bit of a strange setting, me and my camera and my daughter behind waving at me to tell me to look in that direction. But I'm here today on behalf of uh, some other colleagues, Erika Pernold, you'll see her in a little while, Monika Altenreiter and Martin Gutzelnik, to talk to you about our project, um, COIL, in, the, in social work education. Hello, my name is Erika Bernold from FHU and Neom as well, ZML Innovative Learning Scenarios. We are responsible for e-learning at our university and for the technical infrastructure when it comes to video settings and online streaming. How did the idea of the project arise? Since typically at the University of Applied Sciences, students have compulsory attendance to lectures, and they tend to spend a lot of their days in the same fashion. So they're going from lecture to lecture, seminar to seminar, and um, it can get a little monotonous. It's always with the same group of people and the same routine. We decided um, that it'd be nice to introduce, introduce a new classroom setting somehow, new perspectives and new challenges to our students. We chose the third semester to do our project because it, at this point, university is becoming um, well, students are getting used to the fact that they're a university, it's no, not new anymore, and yeah, the novelty of it is, is waning at this point. And so what we did was um, we had an opportunity in the form of an Erasmus partner at Malmö University in Sweden. Um, we had already had a, a partnership with Student Exchange and Staff Exchange, so we actually knew these people that we were going to be working with, and they already had some experience in the, in the area of online learning and so webinars. So um, we consulted with our students to see what they thought about the idea and they were actually very motivated and very curious as we were to try an experiment to do an online international classroom. What exactly is COIL? Maybe now is the time to explain what COIL actually is. So COIL stands for Collaborative Online International Learning. These four points. And according to the European Association for International Education, in order to be a real COIL classroom, uh, to be a COIL activity, it really needs to fulfill all four of these points. So let me just go through them individually. There's C uh, for collaborative. Both staff and students need to be collaborating here. So staff need to be on an even footing and both be involved in the teaching of the, of the class of the activity. And the students need to um, effectively and efficiently collaborate online over with different nationalities over borders uh, in order to complete the activity. Online, obviously, as I just said, the activity should be exclusively or mostly online. In our project, the students did have to prepare a text and um, some questions first prior to the COIL classroom. They had to do that offline, but the majority of the discussions were online. International, at least two different nationalities have to be involved. And you'll see later, I'll explain the way we did it. Obviously, Sweden was our partner, but there were more than uh, two nationalities involved in our classroom. Um, the international perspective, this always adds that to the internationalization and to the intercultural learning in the COIL classroom. And finally, the learning. It should be a learning activity. It's not just an optional extra or like a fun to do activity. There should be some learning outcome. What preparation was involved in the run-up to the remote classroom? So first, obviously, you have to have an international partner who wants to undertake the endeavor with you, if you like. We, had, uh, we were lucky to have Sweden, who were very enthusiastic and already had some experience. Um, then in the run-up to the classroom, there's several steps you need to take in the planning. You need to decide the content of the class. Uh, in our case, we had to choose together, me and my colleague in Sweden, we had to choose together an appropriate text and decide how we were going to uh, use and work with the text. Secondly, we had to decide on what learning outcomes we had. What was the goal for the students? What, um, what do we want them to achieve? What was the purpose of our classroom? Thirdly, um, it's very important to actually plan the, the detailed structure of the class so that it's not chaotic when you get there. Um, who is going to do what when? Where are they going to be in the classroom? And also finally, to have a run through, a technical run through with all the equipment is a good idea and to get tips and hints from the technical staff. How difficult was it to prepare the online infrastructure for this setting? 
as we are not in the lucky situation to own a lecture hall with an installed recording and streaming hard and software, we had to look for another solution. In theory, we knew what we were asked for. However, we first had to check if other units at the university owned the equipment we wanted to use. So we came across with a Sony NX70 camera and a portable streaming and recording hardware. We went to the future lecture room and tested the equipment multiple times, first without audience, then with colleagues at the university and then with the colleagues from Malmö. A challenging situation was that we could not install the setting and let it be, but had to transfer it multiple times to the rooms and back, which is a source for mistakes. Was there any preparation work involved for the students and how did they react to the idea? As I mentioned before, the students were really enthusiastic about the idea of working together with international colleagues. So they were well prepared um, in the event. What they had to do in preparation was they had to just read the text that uh, we had chosen for them and they had to come up with questions that they wanted to discuss. So there was some offline uh, pre preparation time necessary for students in our COIL experience. Can you discuss the structure of the classroom? How was the session organized? Before I discuss the session, maybe just quickly point out, you do need um, quite a lot of notice in advance of when you're going to do the classroom, the, the joint classroom, because you have to make sure that there's room in the timetable in both countries for this session. So that's one thing maybe to keep in mind. The actual classroom setting, um, I'll explain how it was in Graz and basically in Sweden it was the same. So we had the the fixed camera at the front and we had a table for discussion. So the students, the students who were actively taking part in the discussion, they sat um, at the table and they were filmed. The rest of the students were listening to the discussions and they were just sitting in a semicircle at the back. Obviously, due to data protection laws, we asked the students at the beginning if it was OK to film it and to use the videos in later um, sessions. And that was fine. Then in Graz, we had four um, four groups, A, B, C and D. And basically each group had 20 minutes. They came to the front. They asked the questions they wanted to. They discussed with the students in Sweden, also in four groups, A, B, C and D. And then we changed, had a little break in between. The teachers were actually just facilitators, facilitators in the whole process. So we didn't take part in the discussions at all. That was just the students. We just kept the time and introduced the class and at the end uh, wrapped up and maybe summarized a few things. Um, one more thing maybe to say, we had a slight, we had actually a discrepancy in the numbers. So in Sweden, the class was a lot smaller. There were only nine students. And in Graz, we had 23. Didn't turn out to be such a problem. I mean, maybe wasn't ideal, but we just had five or six students in Graz discussing and there were just two or three in Sweden. How did you go about testing the system with your colleagues from Malmö? What was important? Testing with the colleagues from Malmö was very nice. They were very helpful. We learned a lot from each other in terms of online streaming. We faced problems with the availability of the lecture room and sometimes we had technical issues as we always had to install the complete setting before testing. What did the students think of the experience? At the end of the session, obviously, we were very interested in what the students thought about uh, the experience. As well as talking to them, we also handed out a questionnaire, an anonymous questionnaire. Uh, and there were three questions on this questionnaire. The first one, um, what do you think of the webinar approach uh, with students from more than one location? The answer to this question um, was unanimous, that they were all positive about this approach. The second question was, in what way did the webinar meet your expectations or not meet your expectations? Um, 75% of students uh, said that, they, that the webinar, that the COIL learning experience met or exceeded their expectations. So this uh, was good news. The ways in which it didn't were, on the one hand, um, a few students, quite a few students know, mentioned a few technical issues that we had. Um, maybe um, Erica will talk about that later. Uh, Yeah, she will. <laughs> um, and secondly, students would have liked to have had more discussion, some more spontaneous discussion. The third question um, 
was what are the most important reflections you take with you from this seminar? And here um, they answered obviously specifically in the area of social work uh, and things, but um, a lot of students mentioned the, the inter, intercultural aspect. I can read a few quotes. Um, for example, I liked how different or how similar our perspectives and experiences were. I think it helps widen our scope of thinking into a more global view. Our social problems and solutions are not only local. That was one. And um, another student wrote, I found it very interesting discovering how other countries and societies dealt with many important and prevalent social issues, which is important for us to learn. So basically, they, they were very positive about uh, the learning experience. Were there any technical challenges during the live session? We tested so many times in advance, as I already said. However, most of our tests were in the afternoon because there were fewer lectures taking place and it was possible to get in the room. We thought we were prepared for every situation that could happen. However, the actual event taught us differently. We never talked to our facility management about the event because we never didn't think it concerned them at all. During the live session, all of a sudden, the laptop shut down in the middle of the streaming. Luckily for us, the colleagues from Malmö and Graz took it with humor and agreed on a 10-minute coffee break. We then learned from the facility management at, that all university laptops do an automatic update on Wednesdays at 10 a.m., which you could not block. It was funny afterwards, but the lesson we learned was more a social thing than a technical one. Talk to many people about the things you want to do, especially when company technology is involved. There are always people who might know something you do not know. Are there any lasting effects of the project? Is it sustainable? As I mentioned before, students were asked in advance if it was uh, okay for the sessions to be recorded, which we did uh, do. So the sessions that we have are now available to recycle, to use in other contexts in other classrooms. So it's not just like a one-shot classroom, not just useful for these students who actually took part in this online collaboration, but it can also be used for other students um, in the future. In fact, um, our colleague in um, Sweden has already used uh, some of the extracts from the video for a master's class and I myself have used it as well with other students who didn't have the opportunity to actually take part live. What advantages do you see compared with a normal classroom setting? Um, students seemed to be not only more motivated but also better prepared for the COIL classroom than sometimes, um, probably because of the unknown other who was going to be sitting facing them and discussing the topic with them. Um, the fact that it was something completely new and something different gave the class kind of an energy that's not always there. Um, also, of course, the students were not only learning about the topic under discussion, social work as a human rights profession, but they were also gaining international and intercultural perspectives. Um, in addition, we should also mention language skills were improved because they, they were using a second language. All students were using a second language um, to really communicate uh, something important in their professional field. Um, students were not only... Um, one second. The students had the opportunity not just to read about or um, learn, learn in a secondhand way about experiences and attitudes from others, but they um, were experienced them synchronously with their peers. The, it wasn't obviously quite face to face, but the Zoom classroom did allow real spontaneous interaction and discussion. There were also, it was also more, as I mentioned before, a heterogeneous group because the people from, from all over the world were present. Internationalization is a professed goal of both universities and this uh, COIL classroom gave us an opportunity um, it contributed basically to, to internationalization at home. Now, internationalization at home can take many different forms, but basically it offers all students global perspectives within their program of study, whether or not they are able uh, to travel abroad themselves. Are there any other benefits of the project? Yes, of course, there are other benefits. Um, our projects can be linked in a positive way to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. 
Um, for example, goal four is quality education. And our students have access to international teaching staff and they have the opportunity to hear international voices from different cultures and traditions. Um, the fact that there's no need to board a plane and fly to a different country to get experience obviously contributes to goal number 13, climate change. Um, maybe not quite as obvious. Um, I think it also contributes to goal number 10, which is reduce inequalities, because for a lot of students, internationalization is problematic. They, they, or it might not be an option for them to go abroad for financial reasons, perhaps, but also maybe because of a, a work responsibilities or family responsibilities. If they have a child, you can't just uh, go abroad on an exchange semester. Um, so it reduces the, the inequalities of those not able to participate directly in going abroad. Will you do the project again? And if so, is there anything you will change? Yes, we do plan to do the project again in autumn and we plan to implement some of the suggestions the students gave to us in their feedback sheets. For example, um, if possible, we'd like the students to get to know each other beforehand, um, somehow online, um, before the actual recorded Zoom classroom. This could, we think, reduce inhibitions and lead to more discussions in the actual classroom session and into, obviously um, increase intercultural learning opportunities. We'd also like to involve other partner universities. Um, we're thinking already perhaps in, in, in Holland or in the UK, and it might be possible to have a class with um, more than one, one uh, country involved. So it, there's no reason, there's no technical reason why uh, three or even four different universities might not take part in the same classroom. We'll see how that goes. So basically to sum up, um, we have very positive experiences with our project COIL in social work education. We'd encourage you to try something similar. And I think especially now in, in Corona times when everyone's a little bit more used to technology, the, the barriers to, to using it should be reduced and the opportunities should be more evident.